All right. So, if those of you who don't know me, my name is John Reed. I've been working with Taylor. I'm not an employee of Taylor, but I've been working with Taylor for nine years now. And my role originally was to take this out of the world of McDonald's, which is everybody's world of frozen patty, which was what most people know or did not know of Taylor Grills for, for the years we had it. So my role has been from the beginning is, how do we look at this machine to do something other than a frozen patty? Still after nine years, most people think, oh, that's a McDonald's. All it does is cook frozen patties. The first thing you have to understand is that this is not a piece of equipment that you tell a client, well, this is the way you're gonna cook it. That's the first thing you have to get out of your head. You have to go in and vet your customer, understand what their product is, and then to build a program to meet what that customer wants. And what I mean by that is, there are a thousand ways to cook a burger. There are a thousand burgers. There are thousands of opinions. You know what they say? Every difference between an opinion and an a-hole is? Everybody's got one. Everybody thinks their burger is the best burger. They want it crispy. They don't want to do it. So that's what you're learning to do today. I want you to understand that this is a very customizable piece of equipment based on what the client wants. Not what you think is the way it should be done. So your job going in with a client is to understand what their product is, what their hot points is, because there are people who say it is very personal. That burger is their livelihood, that piece of salmon, that piece of chicken, that is their heart and soul. If we go in and say, well, you don't, you've been doing it wrong for years, that doesn't bode well, right? So you have to learn how to figure out how to make this piece of equipment work for them. Because once they see it work for them, you've done your work as a salesperson and it's an easy sell. If you don't do your work, you're going to have a hard time. Are you guys, what do you think of this platform and what you've experienced so far? John, you've been around for a long time. You mean world in, in general, what do you think? Strengths, weaknesses? The weaknesses are exactly what that board did to demonstrate the capabilities of the grill. Okay. Who's never really worked on it? Anybody? Okay. And what is your, when you look at it, what do you think of it? Is it scary? What, what's your biggest challenge with it, do you think? If there's no challenges, you should be selling these left. I, I shouldn't be here, right? I'm going home, right? Silence is acceptance that I understand it, right? Why? Just because they're so used to a flat top, and being able to use the whole flat top at once, where here they, they're intimidated by it. Okay. The programming looks complicated. Okay. So those are the challenges you have to get over and figure out how do you get them in there and say it's not complicated. Now, going from flat technology to double-sided cooking technology has to take you over a threshold. And that threshold is, well, that's the way we do it. I can't keep up. I'm just going to load the crap out of a flat top and, and figure it out. That's why you have long lines, inconsistencies, issues. You have 72 feet of flat grills because they can't keep up. All of those scenarios. So when you're going into this technology, you have to change the way you think a little bit about what we call olive and new cooking, which is order comes in, you slap it on the grill, to what we call a modified batch, which means is you're stacking orders a little bit firing more than one by firing more than one you're going to cook them faster 
because if you cook a la minute when the order comes in, you, all you're doing is stacking time. You're building up time, you're building up time. By waiting, firing, waiting, firing, you're now doing what we say is 66% faster because you're working within the environment. You're also thinking about, I'm taking my culinarian, my cook, who's a huge part of the process, he's also your biggest liability, right? Your biggest liability is cross-contamination, on bad sanitation practices, returns because they're not getting the order right, waste because they're not cooking right. You need to eliminate that. By putting the cook from here with their face to the grill back to the customer, putting their back to the grill, face to the customer, where am I, where's my focus now? Customer, details, making sure that order's right, nice plate presentation, I'm not chewing stuff out the door. Right, so that's kind of where you got to flip your mind around to. I can't stress enough, you have to understand your customer's products. If you really want to get them in there, ask them, hey, what do you, we want to show you, but can we get some of your products? Because we want to, that's the best sell in the world. You take their product, put it on here, and show them what you can do with it. That's really the, the, the best case scenario, okay? Now, in terms of daily maintenance, it's pretty easy. Turn it on, you let it heat up about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Programming, I've loaded uh, the last NRA. I did 2017, which is kind of the last big NRA we did. Um, so you have about 60 programs on each grid in here. So there's plenty to use, plenty to demo with your clients. In terms of bits and pieces for your demos when you're showing clients, you want to make sure that you've always got plenty of clean, nice sheets. I like to do the two clips on top instead of one. Uh, have the grill, make sure you have the, the what you've got here, which is the tool assortment. This is the perfect grill to have, uh, spatula to have. This is the little Dexter Russell one. You notice that it's got that beveled edge and beveled front edge. The round spatulas that you're used to seeing on a flat grill don't work on here. A couple of reasons was. They're rounded edges, you can't get good, you can't scrape it off, and they don't sit, they roll out of the rack, all right? Uh, squeegee, I've been using it this morning, but make sure after a while, what happens if you, if you keep it up here, you can get little nicks along those edges. So you wanna make sure that you're always replacing those out. You should get a supply of them when they come in. Just make sure that squeegee is clean. If you need to, you know, you just press down. Come on, baby. It's a nice one. Pop it out. Wash it. You can take it, flip it back over, get the new edge on, and work it back in to popping it in. My fingers are kind of tough, but stuff you don't do in front of the client, right? Don't do what I say, especially when it's got grease on it. I'll make it easy, I'll just flip it back over because it was a new new rubber anyway. All right. Okay, all right. Uh, the other one is this, uh, this grill scraper seen its days. I put a brand new blade on it and notice that it has got a really sharp blade. Um, this piece should be bent up for protection. It should be more of a angle. I was trying to bend it, but didn't have it. But you want to make sure that blade is clean and no has burrs in it. The reason being is if it has burrs in it, all you're going to do is scrape up the top surface of, of, the, flat, of the grill itself, right? And then those three pieces, if you keep them, that's really it in terms of equipment. Replacement sheets, 
Always have a couple extra bars, extra clips. Um, cleaning wise, I'm going to clean later this afternoon. High temp fryer gloves that you're all familiar with. Make sure you have the right high temperature cleaner. The blue aromat, uh, ergonomic brush, as well as new pads. And I go with the, I, I change the pads every couple of, couple of days. If I'm like, if I'm at the trade show and I'm cooking all day long, I can get four or five days out of one. Heavier places, heavier clean, you might want to switch them out a little bit or tell them to switch them out a little bit sooner. You'll know. That's it. You don't, no grill brick, no vinegar, no ice. That's it because you have the cleaning mode on the grill. So those are, if you have all of those little pieces, you've pretty much got everything you need for the demo. Now, in terms of product and how we cook on it, I'm going to walk you through kind of some menu parts today and talk about how we're programming and using multi-stage cooking and the link gap. Everyone familiar with the link gap in the programming? The link gap. Okay. So in the Taylor programming, we can have up to three separate stages, each with its own time and each with its own gap. There is a linkage piece, which we'll, I'll show you in a second, which allows you to control whether or not the platen is released between each stage or stays in position. I mean, it doesn't release to top. It just comes up to what they call home and then back down again. In the transition from the original McDonald's, there was an ability to L one of the things we had to do was that gap, that platen had to come up and release. It couldn't go directly to a second gap. It had to either go home or release or come back down to the second gap. As the next generation of grills come out, some of those issues will be solved. So currently, we're going to show you, I'll show you bacon. I love starting the day off with the bacon. And there's a couple of, couple of reasons why. Bacon is going to get the grill kind of cleaned up. It's also setting you up for breakfast or lunch or whatever throughout the day. Traditionally, people are throwing bacon in the oven. We're going to show you you can do it while you're prepping other things. I don't have sheet pans. I don't have tons of grease. I, I'm wearing short sleeves. I don't have all that labor. And I got 1820, which, which is your standard bacon, and I actually am using the sheets that it came on in. So I'm slavey. I'm not taking those. What's parchment paper? Does everyone know what parchment paper is? This wax paper? What's the thermal properties of parchment paper? Doesn't burn. Doesn't burn up to 500 degrees. What's the max temperature on this grill? 450. 450 and 450 at the top, 400 on the bottom. So is it within the thermal parameters of the grill? So what I do is I get the, the layout bacon, which you buy from Cisco or GFS or whatever. I slack it out overnight so it's not frozen. You can do it while it's frozen. And I just lay it out, organize it, so the bacon's not, over, it's not overlapping, okay? You have your landing zones, fits right in the landing zone. I do too. Just make sure they're not overlaid. On with the parchment paper. Start one, start two. And I'm gonna walk away. Okay. When it comes down, how many seconds are on there? Can someone see? About 70 seconds, okay? So it's searing. I'm searing down and I'm coming down to a really tight gap. I'm really pressing down on that bacon. 
But what happens with protein as you continue to press down? Grease, Grease comes down what, and you're starting to compress it, right? As you're pressing it and moisture's coming out, that product's getting chewy and tough, like a steak or a grill brick. So what I want to do is I want to release it a little bit for that product to relax, to really create some mouthfeel so it eats right, right? Because I'm still concerned about how does it eat? Well, it looks great, but it doesn't chew well, right? So this is what we've come up with as a basic good starting, because I also know I'm going to reuse this bacon in other applications throughout the day. It might go on a sandwich. It might be going to a sa over top of a burger. Now, it's a beep. What's, what's happening to the platins? They're coming up to home, and they're coming down to a second controlled gap, which I programmed. So what we're using there, that's called a linked gap. It's linking, it's not releasing. And I'll show you that function. It's either yes or no when we, tomorrow when we're playing around with the programming and stuff. Okay? Now, you can use that technique for many different things, not just bacon. I let it rest for a second. Now if it comes, I got pretty thick fingers, so I slide that off. Parchment paper. I'm done. So it's in a grain rack. I'm done. Between each cooking process, scrape and squeegee, you want to make even, push towards the back, get all that residual. Then squeegee, start at the top, even, make sure you're pushing down nice and hard, getting all that material off there. Now, depending on the bacon, you're going to have to adjust it. This is the standard cured bacon. Now, some people like heavily brown sugar bacon, thick cup bacon, peppercorn bacon, whatever they want. The only way to really test it, to, to get a program, is to test it and cook it. Okay? So, in 90 seconds, that's the total cook time, we have bacon. You guys want to try? I know you're hungry. I know bacon always smells good. So I've got a little bit of bacon there. A little bit of bacon here if anybody wants it. Okay. Now that's the bacon I've, I've chosen to cook. Now, if the client says, well, I want it more crispy, less crispy, a lot chewy, all you can do is you're diving into the program and adjusting per se. Okay. okay. I'm also prepping. While I'm doing it and talking, I'm getting ready to prep. I mean, you guys are hungry, so I'm going to put a couple more pieces of bacon on to show you how we go into some other things. So what do you think for 90 seconds, right? Huh? Other trick, make sure you figure out, what, make sure you got your program set before you hit a button. Double check. <laughs> okay. All right, so this idea of prepping is that I'm a breakfast place, I'm a, I'm a C-store, 
I got my rack. I got a tray, Grace off. I'm doing this while I'm getting other things done. I'm looking at you. My back is towards the grill. I'm not over here flipping bacon, scraping inconsistencies, trying to log that, right? When I put it on, I was at within the parameters of the program. You all familiar with the three the diamonds down the bottom, right? Green means good. Red means I got to do something, whether it's cooling or heating. They may not come in on at the same time based on what's happening, the thermal conditions of whatever's happening in there. In terms of programming temperatures, we always think about three things when we program. Time, temperature, and gap. In a program like I've put on your grill here, you have 60 odd different products. You're gonna really kick the grill's ask if you, ask if you're trying to change the temperatures every time you look at a different program. So what you have to do is figure out what's the most dominant thing you're gonna pre pre cook. So if it's burgers, and burgers are the ones, you dial in the burgers, and then every other program that you do should be based on those temperatures. So eliminate that temperature, right? That way, what's, is the grill always ready? It's always ready, right? Instead of heating and cooling, heating and cooling, what's the energy load now? It's, it's always good. You hit it in standby, it goes into standby mode, it's always ready to go. So that's a two-stage gap. So if I'm a sea store and I have a hot table or like a, a warming oven, that bacon's hanging out, no problem. It's staying warm. I'm not putting it on a greasy paper t plate above it, reheating it. I'm cooking on demand. Now I'm saying, okay, I got to get my breakfast ready to go. I'm waiting. I'm going to do some sausage patties. I'm going to go to the other side. Find my sausage patty. One, two. I'm getting, I'm cooking sausages. I'm getting other stuff ready, so my my time is util being better utilized. Oh, shit. Oh. Okay. So we're going to talk about other things. We're going to talk about convenience food delivery and pick up drive throughs are key. So we're gonna look at some items that are good. Breakfast sandwiches are all big things, so we're gonna look at kind of the ideas around breakfast sandwiches. So, got nice bacon ready to go. Do you notice I didn't, all I did was change the program. I didn't go into the program. I just selected a different number. Now, is that sausage thicker than the other one, than the bacon? One step cook. Mm. 
That's 60 seconds. That's a refrigerated pre-cooked sausage patty reheated through food safe temperatures in 60 seconds. Other than a sheet pan to holding and working out of my container, any other equipment? No, right? What am I saving? Labor, wear washing, dishwasher, soap, hot water, all of those other things. So you got to think of think and having those discussions when you're talking to you. How much labor did I save? What did I do here? How many other things did I want to do? I'm still on the same platform. So the next we're going to talk about is egg sandwiches. My meat's hot because I've cooked it. I need to make an egg sandwich really quickly. So I have an over easy egg. It's green, it's ready to go. The temperature is going to come down a little bit. So I'm going to start my eggs. So uh, I brought the eggs out earlier. I like them at room temperature because I think they cook a little nicer. And we're going to start before I do the egg. I have tech, thick Texas toast. Right? I've done the prep work and got my earlier. While I was cooking bacon, I was buttering my bread. So I've buttered it, room temperature, soft butter. Now, we like this technique because I think it makes a better sandwich. And I've changed it breakfast sandwich with cheese. I've hit that, that's coming down. Vegeline is the preferred one. It's a food service release for the eggs. On we go, over easy egg. Now I'm cooking on both sides at the same time, but what's my total cook time between the two? It's a little over a minute, minute and 20 seconds. So it's not a lot of time. If I do four, I lay out eight pieces of bread, four eggs, I'm making four sandwiches in the same amount of time. So do you see how you're starting to really pick up your speed, right? Five seconds, I got 18 seconds, that comes up. I'm gonna take two nice pieces of American cheese. Cheese, bacon, let's put some bacon on there. Come back down, it's gonna cut, that's a link, an unlinked gap because I got a second stage, is my fried egg. Seven seconds. So look this, I mean, this is set for that specific piece of toast, correct? Yeah, that's a thick piece of toast. You see, uh, the bacon's hot again, because I have it, right? I'm using the top. I have a nice egg. There goes my bread. All right, we talked about not crushing the bread. You can do the same thing for grilled cheese. Now you have filled grilled cheese. I'm not pressing it down. I've got nice toast on the inside that's gonna give us some crispiness. The cheese is gonna be nice. We're gonna put that, you can see the color from all that butter, right? Butter is always great. And then smells good. A little bit, right? In under a little over a minute, I have a brilliant, nice, perfect breakfast sandwich. All right? If I'm in the weeds and I want to do another another type, one second. We can do we can do all kinds of things. So what else can I put in there? I can put ham, I can put egg, I don't need to do the egg, I can do cheese, I can do a vegetarian, I can put the same idea here. Can I do pulled pork in there if it was hot? I'm not trying to treat it like a grilled cheese per se. I can do a grilled cheese on thin bread, you know, you still have the inch gap, but now I'm op doing it open faced on one side. So if I just did those sandwiches that way and I had my pulled pork Sitting off to the side, hot pastrami, or 
corned beef sitting away, in 60 seconds, I can get a really nice piece of golden bread like that, fill it, the cheese is melted, I can reheat it from the top because it's non-stick, and I just fold it. Now I'm really making a gourmet sandwich relatively quickly. Okay. Same thing, I want to do an egg big muffin. Maybe I'm doing scrambled eggs or something that's, you know, I'm keeping in a steam table. I'm not, I don't want to do over easy eggs because I don't have the time, but I want to do something similar to an egg McMuffin. Put some butter on there. You can use whirl. It can be melted butter, brushed on. This could even go through a toaster oven, right? I changed to English muffin. I'm pushing that down. I have the uncooked patty. I have muff sausage muffin with cheese. I'm pushing that down. I'm looking at my orders. I'm working on this. Cleaning up as I go. And I can bang out eight of four sandwiches on one side or more. If I had a belt toaster, I can make eight sandwiches, 16. It all depends on how fast I am. So maybe the whole sandwich is cooked on here like that. Maybe portions of the sandwich is cooked on here and I'm sending it down the system where they're putting the egg or microwaving the egg puck or think of Dunkin' Donuts. Everything they throw in a microwave. Single platen like that. You can do a lot of, of, of different things with it. So you're expanding your ability from getting burger. We haven't even talked about burgers yet, right? I'm still in breakfast. Right? Now, I always like to do this whenever the platen comes up and incorporate a flip. Now, and that's coming from my chef, fancy chef background. I want to make sure that that product is flipped over because what happens is 335 on the bottom, 450 on the 400 on the top, 425. Different kind of heat sources. That's just, that's just basic physics. We got to have more at the top. But the product itself is being hit by those two different temperatures. So there can be a slight unevenness of the heating. So if you can incorporate a flip, do so. It gives you a better landing area. Now I've got an egg that went into the microwave, put it on top. Now I'm in breakfast sandwiches. Buttery, hot egg McMuffin that hasn't been affected by a microwave. What does microwave do? It makes everything chewy, right? This is not chewy because I've controlled the gap. I'm giving it a little bit more flavor. I'm getting a little bit more mouthfeel, so forth and so on. All right. Questions so far? Is this something you've done before with a client? Talk breakfast? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now we're going to talk about thought processes and what should the gap be. Okay? There's two ways to approach it. One I know based on a product and I can measure it and say it's that thickness. So having a caliper, these are you can get them online on Amazon, they're like 15 bucks, gives me my thickness. I'm going to get an average thickness. Then I'm going to work from there depending on what I want to do with it. Okay? So we're going to talk about I'm going to set a gap. I'm going to have something come up to it. Or I'm going to set a gap and have the gap come down, a hover above it. There's a couple of thought processes there. And we're going to use pancakes for that example. 
All right. So this is a classic pancake where you think about where I'm set. I'm going to use a one-stage gap, not linked. I'm going to pour the product down, and I've said I want my pancakes this thick, and I'm going to allow the pancake batter to come up to that. Okay, because what's in pancake batter? You got a leavening agent, baking soda, baking powder, whatever Aunt Jemima decided to put in there. So there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in there. All right, so I just want to make sure that my surface is clean. Oh yeah, guys, if you want to eat, I'll put a knife up, and you can guys can cut yourself sandwiches or eat pieces while I'm I'm talking. So if that's all right, here's a cutting board, and here's a a knife. All right. Okay. So I just want to make sure I had some clean, got some residual off there. I'm going to pour my pancake batter on, just like you would with a with a gun. Now, is this a is it is the Taylor grill designed to be a pancake machine? No. Can it make pancakes? Yes. Can it solve a solution for a particular type of customer? Yes. We think of restaurants and Z stores, business hotels. Guys, Drury Lane this morning, you go breakfast, what do they have? A buffet dish. How are they making those pancakes? They're taking a frozen pancake out of the freezer and warming up in an oven. They waste them. If I can make eight pancakes in one shot and fill a buffet and have fresh made pancake, does that change the game you're looking at that market? Now you're opening that marketplace. Late night room service, 60 items. How, how much training do you have to do for that chef? They can push and go. And so you're looking outside of the traditional marketplaces. All right. Uh, all right. And then I have another pancake that I'm going to show you the difference. So what I did here was I said I'm going to come down and let the pancake rise and touch the top of right someone screwed around with this pancake I think this is not yeah this might be a little fluffy so I'm going to have to adjust it Huh. One side, right? Does everyone look at the other side of their pancake when they get it on a stack? You do? No? Tell me that doesn't look like. What was the cook time on it? I got to look Anytime you want to know the, the cook time, you don't know it, you know the trick technique, right? Go over to the go over to the item, hold it down for 15 seconds. It's going to bring it up. So it was a total 90 seconds, a minute and a half. I started with a one inch gap and I came down and pressed it. So that was, I forgot we had uh, two different ones. So let me see. That was a linked gap. Let me see what this pancake says. I might have changed it. All right, so that was a two-step one. This is actually the one-step one, and I'll show you the difference, all right? So that was starting off of an inch. It let the pancake rise, do its thing, and it came down and seared it. And why we did that because this is the way we used to do it and you're always screwing around with the consistency of the pancakes batter to get what you need so this is just going to come straight down go to one gap and stay there right so i've used the linked gap which in the programming says yes means it's linked it's not going to release 
you can, if you want it to release, you're hitting that program button that says no. And that will only show up when you're adding a second step in the programming. Okay? All right. While we're cooking pancakes, I, on all of the comments that I read from you for the customers coming in, there was this mention of omelets. Okay? Definition of an omelet. Is it a rolled omelet or whatever? It's an expensive piece of equipment to doing what we call a rolled omelet in the business, where you throw the eggs on the flat, roll them over, put the stuff in. That's called a rolled omelet. Traditional omelet is done in the pan. You can do them, yes, but I don't think it's the best utilization of this piece of equipment to do an omelet. You're going to have another place to do an omelet. You can do the bacon. You can do the sausage. We'll talk about French toast in a second. But you can do all of those things on here. But eggs is really uh, still an art, and it could be a supplement. See, this one looks a little, gives a little bit more color. You get a little bit more bleed out. See, it's starting to push out, mm -hmm. depending on how active the, but still two different examples. If you want to taste them for texture, there's some forks right here. Someone can cut them up. There's some maple syrup. There's some plates. Help yourself. All right. So we've talked about prepping, getting bacon done. We've cooked the sausage to order. We've cooked pancakes to order. Can we do French toast? Absolutely. Right. French toast, once again, I'm gonna, I haven't done French toast in a while. I'm gonna hold it to see what my uh, program is. 605, 90 seconds. Okay. Once again, same, I'm using the same bread. I'm going to use the Texas toast. And the thing about French toast is, is getting is the bread itself. Traditionally, French toast is a French thing. They use day-old baguettes, and they would really soak the bread relatively a long time. So it would resorb all the egg, and you wanted to make sure that everything was cooked in the center. So baguette used to take a long time to do it. We've just gone to white bread, you know, standard white bread. Now brioche, whatever, it's what the client wants to do. I just have some milk, scrambled egg mix in here, cinnamon sugar, and, and that's it. So I'm going straight down, no, oil no oil no nothing any do we have any dietitians in the room any dietitians going once going twice what's the added oil content to that product none I haven't added butter I haven't done anything what's the health benefit less fat less oil less waste I don't have these things all over the place. Whirl, butter, all of that kind of stuff. Now, it's, yeah, it's great flavor. Can you do it? Yes. That's up to the client to make that decision. Because I did it without oil. What does the client say? Can I use butter? Yes. Have I sold them on it? I, I've just sold them on it because I said yes to them. Have I customized it to them at that point in time? Just by not adding butter? You don't know if they have an, you don't know if they have an ad, 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 adherence to butter. They might be a vegan. You never know. So you got to think, you know, French toast, other things, but you got to think, oil, can I use this? You got to get them to start buying in when you're having these discussions and doing these demos. Once again, what am I doing? I'm talking to you. Am I flipping fresh toast? Do I have this killer instrument hacking at the flat top, putting all those marks in there? 
No, because what they're trying to do, they're trying to speed up the cooking process. They use the weapon of death, those sharp heads, and whack in the burgers and everything. Right? No butter, no. Oh, come on. you guys are quiet. You know what quiet means? Silence is acceptance. I could just be, I could be uh, saying a whole bunch of BS and you're accepting it, right? All right. Yeah, now I've got, can I do French toast and bacon? Yeah, absolutely. I've got it ready. It's ready to go on the hot spot. Have I added any other, have I used any other piece of equipment? Saucepan, broiler, oven. No. All right, there's napkins and things like that. All right. Before we transition into where we at, all right, first seven. All right, before we transi transition into other parts of the day, let's talk about potatoes. One of the the hot spots or log jams and big breakfast places is potatoes. You probably ask, does it do hash browns? Does it do home fries? As a flat grill, without the platen, without using the platen, absolutely. There are some limitations. One is they still take a long time on a flat grill, right? Can you start them and push them to the side? You ever been into a good old breakfast place? What do they do? They make and they keep pushing them, right? You always want you always ask for them crispy because you want the, the ones on the bottom that have been sitting there for a long time. We have a limitation on this grill because of the grease trap. It's hard to do that. Okay. So is it a solution for home fries and hash browns? My guess is no. You could do everything else, home fries are gonna have to be handed someplace different. Like a traditional flat grill by far is still the best way to do it. Now, that being said, there are some issues with regular potatoes. Once you've cooked them, they do have a lot of starch. That starch is a sugar. Sugar likes to burn, it likes to stick on this piece of equipment. So what is the solution? We've found that the best thing to do or use is these, I hate to say it, these dehydrated ones you soak. I played around for two years. I got these at Restaurant Depot, but you can find them at uh, Gordon Food Service and other places. Basic American Foods, any of those dehydrated ones. You pour hot water over them, soak them for a half hour, drain the water off. They work well. So the question is, what kind of hash browns can I do? These are a long cook. I generally like to use Whirl, which is that butter alternative for these. I didn't bring any with me, but you can use oil. So I'm going to show you how we do how we do it. I landing pool. And we put our hash browns on there. There's two portions. Can I do four? Yes. We'll throw some uh, salt on there, a little pepper. These can be pre-seasoned if you want it to be, or you have your... Now, once again, I could be making sandwiches over here, or doing sausages, or do other things. Once again, for the right situation, late night, hotel, something like that, that it's looking for something. I use these for 
fish as well. I'll put this and I'll stick, I'll take a piece of salmon or mahi or firm fish and I glue this, brush it with egg, put one side on the fish, put that side down when I do it and use them for potato crusted fish. And I do that a lot of times for lunches. All right, so that's a potato product that you can use on here that we've found works best. Can you use fresh potato? Yes. It's, you got to figure out the right way to do it, put raw or whatever. So you can do it in a higher end, but this seems to work. So if everyone says, hey, can you do hash browns? The answer is yes, with limitations. This is one of the techniques that we can use, and it's just dehydrated potatoes. And we do them kind of like to order. This is a link gap, so what I'm doing is I'm cooking it on one side pretty much. I'm trying to get that crust on the bottom. And then I want to try to get some more crust late in the cooking by coming down and pressing. So the first gap is higher than the second gap because I'm cooking. It's going to come up and then I'm going to press down to get some more crust on it. So once again, it's not like cheese. We have a higher second gap where I'm hovering. In this case, I'm pressing down, creating it. All right, so it's going to come up, length gap. And you can see it's going to come down to a lower. And you'll hear it. You can tell, usually tell because you'll hear some additional sear. Get our plates ready. But you don't recommend like freeze or freeze after? Huh? Freeze the fridge, you wouldn't protect it. Um, a lot of water, that a lot of water causes steam. You don't get the nice crust. So, so that's, see, it's got a little bit of sear on that, on the top of it. But where's my spatula? But from a presentation point of view, on a plate, could I put corned beef on there? Beautiful. Right now, for a short order place that needs some hash browns like that, yes, it it it, it can make hash browns. Any questions so far? That's, so that's a good general view of, of breakfast, looking at all of the concepts, some of the things that were brought up in your clients coming in from this afternoon on tomorrow. They talked about general market. What can they do? Omelets and breakfast came up. I know you're going to do uh, breakfast for yourself. On, we're going to do breakfast. So I have plenty of hash browns and sausages and, and plenty of bacon I'm leaving here. So you can play around with cooking these on, thir on Friday morning, right? Any questions on breakfast? So you're taking everything I said verbatim. <laughs> okay, has this started, because everyone's, I see a lot of br wheels spinning in heads. From just this morning, what have you come up with? Mitch, what have you, you your head spinning, what have you learned or thought? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you can use egg rings on there. And I did bring an egg ring, so while we're at it, so customer says, "Can we do it? Can you use an egg ring?" Yes, we can do an egg ring. I don't. Let me see what we have here. So I know this distance is point four five zero, so it's a half an inch thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna program it right now. All right, so the program, you hold the key down. Everybody know the password? Store one, not giving away the house. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so I've got an open space. The program, I'm going to put egg. Return ring. Okay. The gap is 0.50 because that I don't want to. Uh, I'm not. I can't crush that. Uh, traditionally, eggs are about four. We'll do 46 seconds. 335. It'll always default to 425 in the top. Okay, default to 300 on the bottom. I just bring it up to 335. I'm going to make it active. Yes. See how I, it says link right here in the left-hand corner? If I change to Siren, it defaults to yes. That's when it will, it will just go to home. If I hit no, it will release. So I'm just going to go back in and remove in. I've set it for 46 seconds, half a minute. And I'm going to hit OK, active clam, OK. Exit, exit. There's my egg ring. Now, let's try an egg ring. Egg ring goes on. We'll use a little bit of Vegeline. Now, uh, Burger King and uses a tune i think they do they use the machine and they always add a little bit of water to it and steam it we're going to try it without it right so in goes the egg come down that should sit firmly on there and we'll see what happens you can do it my fear is is that you're you're now incorporating the weapon of death because you're hacking and chopping most people today probably going to use from a safety perspective if you're a convenience store boiling the bag egg is the probably the safer way to go we just throw it in a steamer and boiling water because it's that's that's probably the best way it's instead of doing that and you can scoop it. So in the case like the English muffin, they have scrambled egg ready to go. You scoop it done and, and off you go. All right. So I, I got some egg coming over here. So interesting effect. We'll see what we got from this. Excuse me, butterfingers. I need a van, I know, sorry. My wife would normally be here picking, picking up the pieces and yelling at me. All right, so. So, no. So I'm gonna look at, so this is what I do. So this is when I'm trying new things, I'm gonna take a wild strategic ass guess. I'm gonna swag it and see what I think. So, close, right? That'd be nice on there. So, what I'm gonna do, see how it's squirted out of the sides? So, I mean, the egg had no room, so it was trying, moisture was trying to, like water on your roof in the winter time, and when it melts, it's gonna find a way to get in your house, right? It wants to go someplace. So what can we do? Let's go back in the program. I'm going to up the gap. Tenth. Yeah, I think that we'll go there. We'll go up a tenth of an inch, a ten, point one thousand, point one hundredths of an inch. All right, so we're going to start this process again. I'm going to hit OK. Exit, exit. Go back to our egg ring. Put our egg ring on. A little Vegeline.
a little bit better. I watched to go down to see what was going on. Whoa! I have to get to the sink. Sorry, Kate. How many times do the cooks get to go wash their hands on the line while they're prepping and working? Never, right? Once an hour for food safety loss. I'd give you a beer for every time that actually happens, and I know you're not get, you're gonna go thirsty, right? So, a little bit better, right? We had a little bit more room to go. All right. And we always do the, I always like to do, whenever you do the egg, we call, you, you want to do, bring it up and cook it. So, even a little bit more. Would you have to like add a second or two, you think? I don't think so. Normally when you, that's a really good point. So when we talked about those three conditions, gap, time, and temp. Temp we've already eliminated because we're using the same temp to everything. So now I'm just playing with those things. The higher the gap, meaning the closer you get to an inch, the more time you got to give it. Closer you get to zero, less time. So you're balancing those two conditions based on tweaking it. So for example, if you wanted to go a little less color on that, a little less time probably, and I would say a little less gap. Right. Well, You're cooking I'm now, still cooking. Yeah. No, 425. I haven't changed the temperature. Yeah, that's our standard. 425 on the top, 335 on the bottom. Now we were who's we were having the discussion about the burger last night. About they want to hammer it, right? Trying to do eggs at 450, 420 is is going to be somewhat challenging but it can be done. So I'm, I'm not going to leave until I get that egg right. So I'm going to do one more time. I'm going to go back in. I'll do this egg. We'll do that. It'll take five minutes if you guys need a phone call or a break or. So what, at the end of the day, download the menus to a jump drive? So what I, what I said was, is at the end of today, whoever's responsibility, get one jump drive, yeah. put the jump drive in both, Download menu from from the thing, label it as base recipes. If you have things screw with it, just re reload it. So how many screens have you taken? Like three? Six. I use I've got in all six, all six. Okay. on both sides. So this set of programs is different from this set of programs, and the reason we do do that is because y you never know what you're gonna get. You never know what the client needs or whatever. So I added two more seconds. I came up to 520, so we're 20th, 200ths of an inch higher. I don't have, you hear a little press? Yeah. You don't have that squeeze, right? The, we forget to listen when we cook. Do you want to listen to things? Like you hear, Probably means you, sque you squeeze the crap out of it. Because all of a sudden it's squeezing and doing something you don't want it to do. Okay? All right. So as the, this cooks and we tweak it, I'm getting close to where I want to be. So this was the third attempt. Right? I guessed the first one. Second was a little change. Third attempt. I think we're pretty close. How much time did you dial in a product for a client? Couple of minutes. See how you're customizing and tweaking it, right? 
and we can keep we could go go keep going but if I'm flipping this onto an English muffin in a sandwich you know it's a pretty and it depends on the ring some other this is one uh, we were playing around with actually I mean if you get that on a sandwich don't give it to Guy Fieri because he hates eggs but all right. So pretty cool, right? All right. Let's take five minutes. I want to regroup for burgers. And then uh, let's, we'll talk about, once again, you're getting into weapon of death. All right. So give me five minutes. I'll get us ready for burgers.